4 million. In the Toronto municipality, there's one matter is received and we're still establishing uh, the value thereof. In terms of Western Cape, we are looking at those matter. The first one is Matsikama local municipality, where we're looking at for one contract for 500,000. Uh, Lengsbeck municipality, one contract to the value of 400,000. Provincial Department of Health, one meta to the value of 9 million. Uh, Provincial Department of Education, we are looking at one meta for 111,000 uh, 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 million. Department of Agriculture and Forestry, we are looking at one meta and the value is to be established. When we look at Limpopo, we are looking at a Sikukuni District Municipality, where we are looking at eight contracts to the value of 26.3 million. Mpumalanga, we are looking at Department of Health, where we're looking at six contracts to the value of 18.9 million. Northwest, we are looking at JB Max, local municipality, five contract, 11.4 million. Rato, local municipality, seven contract, 141 uh, million. Uh, Northwest, Department of Health, and one meta, 8 million Northwest Department of Education, value to be established, and it's one meta. Northwest Department of Social Development, and it's 8.4 million. When coming to Free State, uh, we're looking at Free State Provincial Treasury. There we are looking at uh, 10 meta, and since yesterday the meta has increased, now it's 11, and the value has also increased to 52 million. Northern Cape, we are looking at uh, Karieberg municipality where there's two meta and the value is still being uh, determined. National departments, we're looking at Department of Labor where we're looking at UIF matters and there's one meta where the value also still needs to be established. Department of Education is one meta to the value of 40 million. Department of Defense, one meta where the value also is still to be established. Uh, Department of Public Works, one meter to the value of 40.4 million. And Department of Correctional Service, there are 22 contractors to the value of uh, 53.9 million. In total, we are looking at 658 contracts uh, regarding PPEs to the value of 5 million. The next slide goes into details exactly what is it that we are looking into in terms of different provinces. When you look at Houting, we are looking at 90 companies used to procure PPE, and we're also looking at 30 companies used to procure medical equipment, 32 companies for services related to catering, flights, accommodation, counseling session of staff, legal cost, car hire, printing, computers and patient care. Five companies for infrastructure project, including the two warehouse to house PPEs and one for COVID-19 quarantine site. Those are the methods that we're looking for halting. When we look at Eastern Cape investigation, the allegation relates to irregular procurement of goods and services. We are looking at decontamination, infrastructure, accommodation and PPEs. We are also looking at lease of 55,000 tablets and e-learning platform. We are also looking at refurbishment and alteration to hospitals and clinic. And there's also the issue of non-payments of temporary employer or employee relief funds. When you look at KZN, there are three methods that we are looking at. It's a irregular procurement of personal protective equipment in the Department of uh, Social De Development. And we are looking at irregular procurement of blankets for COVID-19 pandemic, also in the Department of Social Development. We are also looking at procurement of PPE in the Department of Education. In Northwest, those five uh, meta the, the municipality, we are looking at procurement of sanitizer, procurement of then quarantine site, procurement of PPEs. We are looking at abuse of petrol cart uh, for covert related travels. And we're also looking at distribution of food parcels and procurement of temperature guns. 
In Mpumalanga, we are looking at irregular procurement of the KN95 mask. The mask provided did not meet the minimum standard irregularity in regard to the distribution of COVID-19 funds and irregular distribution of food parcels. In Limpopo, we are looking at irregular award of contracts to eight service providers who were not on the panel of contractors for the municipality. The entities were appointed by municipality on the 23rd of June to perform COVID-19 disaster management project emergency interventions. In terms of Western Cape, we are looking at the procurement of PPEs where we are looking specifically on the bid manipulation and leak bid documentation. That is the, 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 the bid documentation which will leak to the service provider. The sale of fraudulent hand sanitizer where one service provider uh, stole the, the labeling from another uh, service provider. Irregular procurement processes generally in terms of the, the PPEs and we are also looking at the procurement of neuro neurological microscope equipment and also the procurement of food parcels. The, the, the slide and number 18 is repeating itself. It was supposed to be for the one for, 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 for free state. And in terms of free state, we are also looking at the procurement of PPE, where we are looking at the four contractors and relating to 11 service provider where I've indicated that the value is 52 million. In national department also, we are looking at procurement of PPE, where we're looking at irregular process which was followed and awarding of contract to official and friends to the officials. And we are also looking at unemployment insurance funds. And we are also looking at the supply of water tanker to school. And in terms of infrastructure installation, we are looking at the big bridge border post uh, investigation. Those are the matters that we are currently looking at, Chairperson. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Back to you, H.O.U. All right. No, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lefeto. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Um, again, without really wasting time, uh, I know you gave us until 12.30, Chair. Will be a few oh, minutes can, in terms of... Doing, no, you're doing well. You can... You thank can you. Carry thank you, thank thank Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, I just wanted to uh, uh, pick up on Mr. Lecheto's presentation to say uh, these allegations, uh, obviously, as I said earlier on, we would like them to, investi to be investigated and investigated uh, speedily. Uh, we've also looked at the resources. Um, we have looked across the provinces. Uh, the teams uh, are resourced. Uh, we've had to uh, resource uh, some of the uh, investigations that we do, not not that we the, the, we stopped them, but uh, in the, in the process of reallocating resources so that we we, we prioritize this one. Um, uh, so and we are also using uh, 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 some of the expert uh, uh, resources that uh, that we have got uh, access to. Um, so we are the teams are really hard at work. Uh, to ensure that uh, they deliver on time. Uh, I'm going to hand over to <clears throat> my colleague, Dr. Wells, who will take the committee through the integrated model between the civil litigation and the, and the investigating teams. And Chair, just to mention, uh, although this focuses on the civil litigation, we have also ensured that there's an integration approach uh, between SIU and NPA and the Hawks and FIC uh, at the what we call the fusion center. And that center has ensured that all the law enforcement agencies uh, really collaborate uh, for speedy results. Mr. Uh, Dr. Wells, over to you. Uh, good morning, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members. Um, just to contextualize the, li the last two slides that will deal with the integrated model, uh, that will lead on from the specific outcomes that the advocate Mativi alluded to previously. And uh, uh, 
I'm not My sure. Gisa, yes, please. Uh, and I just request colleagues, please, um, can we all have our devices muted unless you're on the platform? Dr. Wells, you may proceed. Uh, thank you, Chair. Then just uh, the second point that I wish to make is that the Civil Litigation Unit is then responsible to ensure uh, the consequence manager, uh, management by means of instituting civil action to recover the losses suffered as a result of uh, findings of the investigations into the allegations of this proclamation. So, Chair, as previously mentioned, the integrated model uh, the project is operating across the country and in a way each region has its own focus areas. In each region, the SIU expects the lawyer assigned to the matter to identify potential instances requiring civil litigation. When a lawyer in a region has identified a potential civil matter, such lawyer must prepare a motivation which will be, uh, which will set out the, the, the reasons for the civil litigation and the merits and submit that civil that motivation to the civil litigation division in the SIU. Um, uh, that uh, motivation is then, if approved by the civil litigation unit, it will be forwarded to the head of the unit for approval. Uh, Chair, on, on approval, uh, the, uh, the lawyers will approach the office of the state attorney with the intention to brief external counsel and uh, the councils would be appointed would be appointed in the region or the SIU can use counsel that will be on standby. Uh, just for purposes uh, of uh, unpacking the, 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 the word standby there in inverted commas, basically means, Chair, as the need arises for the intervention of, uh, of uh, legal practitioners, that the SIU does have access to that capacity via the uh, state attorney instructions that we had uh, in place. Um, then the last point, uh, Chair, on slide 22 is the investigating teams will assist counsel to prepare matters and all matters will be instituted in the special tribunal. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, uh, just to close off, um, yeah, we have really, since the establishment of the special tribunal, we've seen its effectiveness. There's other orders uh, that we have seen come through and quickly. I uh, will not refer to them uh, in this presentation, but at the, at, at, at the next occasion, when given an opportunity, we can demonstrate fully how effective the special tribunal is. Now, this is the civil litigation part, uh, which is really proving to be effective. We have engaged with our colleagues at the, at the NPA, uh, the asset forfeiture unit, uh, to ensure that we all move with speed, because we do refer uh, matters to the NPA for their actioning. And Chair, uh, you'd recall that Scorpa called on us uh, that uh, uh, we should, amongst others, of course we must prosecute all criminal matters, but there's a criminal offense that the Public Finance Management Act creates and the MFMA uh, creates, and we would like to see uh, uh, prosecution in terms of uh, uh, financial mismanagement. Uh, Chair, when you started, you said uh, there is widespread or, or there's financial mismanagement. We would like to make sure that uh, we, 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 we prosecute uh, those who are responsible. And uh, my guide and uh, direction to the teams is that we need to make sure that when we investigate uh, the authorization levels, they must move at all levels from officials, accounting officers, executive officers, or any other person who would be involved in these irregularities. And uh, wherever evidence takes us in terms of corruption investigation, we should not leave anyone out. Uh, so, Chair, just in closing, we are on track to report uh, to the President. Uh, he has requested SIU to report every six weeks. Uh, as I engage with the, with the teams uh, across the, 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 the provinces, uh, we do uh, make a project review every Fridays, uh, and uh, there's one coming this Friday. Uh, I am satisfied as we speak 
that uh, we are making significant pro progress. Uh, so we should be on target to report uh, six weekly, uh, the first six weekly report to the president. Thank you very much, Chair. All right. <clears throat> Thank you very much, uh, Advocate Ntibi and your team. I think um, you have laid out the parameters and the terms of reference and provided clarity. And I think the salient points uh, have been covered. Um, I'm going to hand over to um, my colleagues if um, I've seen the list. Uh, and I would request that Advocate Ntibi, I know this may not have been part of the brief we sent, but because it's already in the public domain, it is therefore a matter of public interest, and of course, therefore, this being the Public Accounts Committee, it becomes our matter. Yes. Um, the allegations which have been made in so far as uh, procurement and SEM processes are concerned in your unit. Yes. Uh, and so request that um, you you flag that issue when you come back yes. for something to speak to it. But I think that it would be in the interest of transparency uh, if you um, give us an initial reaction to that and, of course, to allow the processes which must um, follow to follow and for investigations uh, to actually uh, take place uh, in that regard to clear that matter. So please Thank just you. park that one. We will deal with it. Right. I've seen the end of Honorable Lis and then Honorable Van Minen. Uh, and then other colleagues, Honorable Maha will be number three. All right. Uh, Honorable Liz, over to you. Mazamban. San Bonana Nong. I hope you're all well, and um, I'm glad I was able to join the meeting. Eh? It's a I got I managed to get other business out of the way, so it's it's great okay. to be with everyone, and um, and yes. I hope everyone's well. Um, Mr. Chairman, thank you to Advocate Matibi um, for the report. Um, it's it's early days, I understand that, and so great to see you out of the starting blocks and getting going. Um, but as you yourself said a few seconds ago, that speed is of the essence. Um, and so you haven't as yet um, given us any kind of timelines, and I'm sure that's very difficult, except for the one timeline, which I think is the six weekly report. So um, what you've given us is a very general picture um, with no, no specifics, and I'm sure it's early days for specifics. I'm not being critical. Um, so what what I, I'm suggesting is that we need to to see the details. The public, as the chair has pointed out, is is very concerned. The president's very concerned. Otherwise, you wouldn't have been appointed about the the alleged high levels of fraud and corruption that are associated with the COVID funding. Um, and so. May I suggest, Mr. Chairman, that advocates um, let us also have the six weekly report to the president. Um, if we could have a, a, a copy of that as well. Um, and and that we, we keep the public informed of the good work that no doubt um, the SIU is going to be doing um, so that the public have some confidence that these allegations are being dealt with. So that's that's the one point. Just from a point of clarity, I would want I would like some reassurance that the um, allegations that are being investigated with the National Department of of Water Affairs uh, includes the procurement of the I think it was seventeen thousand water tanks that were dumped all over the country. And apparently the Department of Water Affairs doesn't know where they are, um, hasn't made any specific arrangements for them to be filled with water on a regular basis. Uh, is that contract or those contracts um, part of, of the investigations? Thanks very much, Mr. Chairman. All right. Thanks, Honorable Liz. Honorable Van Minen, over to you. Thank you very much. I, I must say that several of my questions have been already preempted.
by the Honourable Least. So just to add on to that, um, it was discussed that these matters are going to be obviously prioritised with a special tribunal and that you know, funding has been put aside. I just want to know what the potential knock-on effects will be on... Uh, sorry, Honourable Fanisha Soldan. Um, I'm not sure who LL is. If they may please kindly mute their mic uh, so that your bundle of joy does not uh, disturb us. Uh, all right, Honourable Fanmina, you may proceed. Thank you. I just want to know what the potential knock-on effects will be with other important SAU investigations. I'm thinking specifically of issues pertaining to ESCOM. Um, and what kind of delays we'll see there, if they're able to answer that at this point. And then the other two issues I just want to cover, there were a number of um, contracts that were identified with an unknown uh, quantum. When they say it's unknown, do they have any kind of general estimation of what those, those amounts would be? And then finally, and linked to that, I know they're moving fast, and I must commend the SAU for that. What chances are there of monies actually being recovered to ensure that it doesn't all go missing. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much. Honorable Machal. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson, and good day to all. Let me first appreciate the presentation from Advocate Mutibi's team. And, and I'm happy, Chairperson, by finding out that at least all the teams within different regions or provinces are resourced because it was my worry whereby there was a lack of capacity in the SIU units in terms of having the human resource to deal with the huge cases that, that they, they are having. I, I, I think, and I will suggest, Chairperson, that if it is possible that we can get a detail, not, not only the numbers, maybe saying that there are 22 cases in Department of Education, to have specific what type of cases so that we can check what is out there on newspapers, whether it is entailed in different provinces or in different uh, regions, I mean, whatever place is. And again, I fully support Mr. Lis on the issue that if it is possible that we also get a report, when the report is submitted to the president, the committee also gets the report, the progress report on the cases that are investigated. Thank you very much, Jefferson. All right. Um, I think let us get um, responses to that first uh, uh, set of uh, issues. Uh, but on, on, on TB, I would be very interested to, uh, from your provincial heads, the extent to which they are interacting with the provincial legislatures insofar as these matters are concerned. Because I think, uh, colleagues, we, we need to drive home the point that um, in as much as we are equal to the responsibility and the task of the work of what SCOPA is, it will also, however, be a dereliction of duty on our part if we do not, in one way or the other, ensure that there is functionality in the provinces, insofar as SCOPA is concerned. Because I think that creates a, a missing link uh, if it's seen as if this is all a national responsibility and then other jurisdictions are not performing their responsibilities and functions. So I, I would less like to gauge and get the sense the extent to which having list having the provinces been listed here, uh, the ex what, what interactions are you having? Uh, with, 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 with provinces. Um, the second issue is uh, municipalities. I see that there's a huge focus on uh, national and provincial uh, departments, which is good, and we welcome that. But there's also expenditure. Uh, there's been adjustments, deviations, environments uh, at municipal level. And um, I think that the SIU must apply its mind uh, to uh, developing an investigating uh, framework for municipalities yeah. uh, because a lot of issues are going wrong in that particular space. If you consider, for example, that districts 
they have the water competence and uh, honorable list raised the issue about the uh, the tanks the georgia tanks and so on but also at the same time the provision of water uh, is a district competence and we know for a fact now uh, the extent to which those issues uh, have fallen by the wayside and how communities uh, continue to battle and struggle with water. Just to make one example, in my village in Fome, we, for at some point during this lockdown, we didn't have water for 10 days. Mm. But the, the trucks are moving everywhere uh, except where they are needed. Now, what you put in the corruption in the distribution of water with these water tanks, uh, these trucks that move, what that this I can assure you that if you look at that, you will come back with something. There is a deliberate, uh, you know, uh, deprivation of water through the established systems, so that service providers and tenders with these trucks can be able to be brought in. Uh, and not fix the infrastructure that's there, not provide water with the infrastructure that's there. But because a disaster and a crisis is upon us, then these uh, trucks, which are supposed to be providing water, are moving up and down everywhere except for where they are needed. So I, I, I make that as an example of the concern around the, the, the municipalities notwithstanding, of course, the issue around food parcels and so on. Right, colleagues, we will come back for a second round uh, of questions. I do appreciate the fact that there are uh, colleagues who are not permanent members of the committee and therefore will not be in the WhatsApp group, which we use to indicate who wants to speak. I would request that you use the online platform and we will give you an opportunity in the second round of questions. Right, Advocate TV, over to you. No, thank you, Chair. Uh, Thank you very much, Chair. We appreciate uh, the opportunity. Chair, I would like to start off with the uh, allegations uh, that have been made uh, and, and are out there in the public uh, relating to uh, the SCM process at SIU for the masks. So we take that allegations very serious. Uh, and uh, I've already asked the Auditor General uh, of South Africa to look into that matter. Already that matter is receiving uh, prioritized attention by the, by the AG. That is uh, a contract uh, to the value of 58,000 rands uh, for the masks uh, that were brought, bought, uh, I think shortly after uh, the state of the emergency, state of the disaster uh, was declared. So uh, that matter, once it's, once it's finalized, Chair, uh, uh, even ahead of the next meeting that SCOPA may have with us, we will provide that report to SCOPA and make sure that uh, uh, it's pronounced. Um, with regard to Honorable uh, Liz, uh, the speed indeed is of the essence and the teams are on terms uh, with regard to the speed. And of course, we always say uh, we investigate with speed, but we do not compromise uh, the investigations. Uh, the issue of timelines, um, uh, we, we really uh, wanted to make sure that we, we speed up uh, the, the investigations and come out with uh, findings. So, so the, the first six months uh, will really be uh, an indication that it's a, it's a timeline to deal with the allegations that we have received during that period. So, for example, if we received, uh, say, in in in, uh, in Eastern Cape, the issue around the motor scooters, those were the well, some of the first allegations that came up. We would like to see those finalized. You know, when we do the reporting to the president, for example, the issue around or tambo of on the door to door, door to door. Um, uh, awareness campaign that was hugely reported. Those were some of the first that came up. We would like to see that matter also finalized uh, and actions taken. Our our Eastern Cape team uh, is on terms and they know 
that such matters should really be prioritized. There's, uh, there's prioritized matters, the same as in, uh, in KZN, uh, the same as in Gauteng. Gauteng uh, has received really prominence in terms of uh, media publications or out there. Uh, we've, we've, we've prioritized those matters uh, that, uh, that have really been reported. Uh, so, so in terms of the six weeks, and Chair, as you can see, as uh, my colleague Mr. Lecheto said when he mentioned on the allegations, we keep receiving allegations almost every week. Uh, and those allegations uh, keep, keep being added. So, so we, we are really going to uh, uh, phase this, this investigation such that we finalize uh, the, the allegations we received within a specific timeline uh, so that we don't carry them over. And out of those uh, investigations, we then want to see actions being taken, uh, civil recovery, criminal prosecution, we would like to see disciplinary actions being taken or any other regulatory uh, action that should be taken. In terms of the report uh, being made available to SCOPA, uh, when we submit to the president, uh, we will make our note uh, through you, Chair, to the honorable members. We will make our note so that the president is informed because uh, uh, in terms of the law, uh, the president uh, is, is the presidential report but we will merely make a note such that uh, a consideration be taken to immediately receive, to, to release that uh, report to, to SCOPA. Um, the reassurance in terms of Department of Water Affairs, uh, the issue of water tanks, uh, as my information and my colleague, uh, Mr. Lecheto, perhaps you can just confirm that. My information is that uh, we will also be looking at these allegations relating to to the to to the water tanks, uh, Mr. Lucheto, are you able to confirm or not confirm? Ye yes, advocate, uh, I can confirm that we are looking at the the water tanks. Uh, thank you. Alex. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Uh, potential uh, uh, honourable uh, Van Minen, the potential knock-on effect on ESCOM, for example, or other investigations, but what specifically. Hello. Uh, just one second, honourable colleagues and uh, guests. I once again humbly request that you keep your mic muted unless you are speaking. Yeah. I know we may be rusty because we have been on recess, but uh, let us. Uh, yeah, please, colleagues, please. All right, Abukad Mutibi, you may proceed. Thank you. No, thank you, Chair. Uh, uh, when we real reprioritized the resources from various investigations, we have made sure that some of the key investigations are not affected. For example, those that are running in the, in the state-owned entities, uh, for example, ESCOM, uh, uh, honorable members would have seen that uh, work has been done there, and recently we've even gone to court to, to, to enroll a matter and issue summonses against uh, you know the uh, previous executives the board and so on uh, to the tune of 3.8 billion so that that work is continuing uh, and including the referrals for disciplinary or referrals for for prosecution in trans in transnet for example uh, uh, the work continued uh, we have even managed to uh, to, to freeze uh, the assets of one executive uh, the return date for that matter uh, is the 29th of September. That executive has to come back to court, and this is the special tribunal, to show cause why those assets should not be forfeited uh, to the state. Uh, because our evidence is that those assets would have been acquired uh, on, on, on criminal basis, particularly corrupt, corrupt basis. So, we, are, so we, have, we, have, we have tried to balance out uh, the resources uh, while prioritizing this COVID-19 investigation. As we do the reviews every Friday or whenever the teams become aware, uh, for example, one team in KZN has said no, they will re they require additional legal support. Uh, Dr. Wells has already actioned that to make sure that the team uh, gets that legal uh, extra legal support. So the, the teams across the country they do from time to time approach us and say, 
uh, would require that that resource. Uh, for example, in the forensic, uh, for in the cyber forensics, where we do the analysis, uh, where with analysis based on the computer imaging that we would have done, uh, uh, we ensure that those uh, those are also uh, uh, attended to. So so we do we do ensure that uh, uh, we don't really uh, lose momentum materially in the other investigations. The issue around unknown quantum, um, uh, the teams, uh, in terms of the information that they, more often we get real, uh, allegations saying a specific contract has been awarded irregularly. Um, so the team would then take that allegation, they would then go to the specific state institution uh, to start to start the investigation. Uh, and as they do that, then the uh, information gets gathered and they are able to, on an informed basis, say this is the quantum that uh, that we are working on. Um, but uh, as we speak today, uh, those those lines where there has been quantum to be established, uh, the expectation is that by uh, by this Friday, when we do the reviews, uh, they would have uh, uh, they would have uh, co completed the quantification. Um, uh, clear. I couldn't recover the the recovery. The recovery of monies. Uh, the the monies that are that are to be recovered. That that's done through through the civil litigation process. Um, and we are saying we will use from this investigation. All of the recoveries will go to the to the to the special tribunal. Um, I mentioned the issue of ESCOM. That part that that litigation was referred to the High Court because of certain considerations and advice by the legal team. But from this investigation, all of the civil litigation matters will be sent to the special tribunal so that we speed up the recoveries. Uh, Honorable uh, Mafau. Uh, Indeed, we have we continuously apply our mind to the resources in the teams in the provinces. And as I indicated, uh, wherever there's a need, uh, the teams indicate to us um, uh, where they need extra support. And we have put in place mechanism to support the teams. The details on cases so that uh, we can check. Yes, um, uh, we can we, we can do that such that we enable the Honourable members, uh, so that they can, you know, uh, perform their oversight uh, function. Uh, we will look at uh, uh, enhancing uh, the list, uh, and then, uh, honourable chair, through you, we can then resend. And then, once we have resend, you can indicate whether it's sufficient or not, uh, and then we can we can really provide the committee with the necessary uh, detail. Um, Interaction with provincial scopus, Chair. Um, Chair, uh, I was trying to check uh, one of my colleagues. I really want them to say this themselves. Uh, I see there's a comment. There's a colleague from from Eastern Cape in the meeting. The provincial chair is uh, uh, Mrs. Zodwa Tesibe. Uh, I'm not sure if she's in the room, but I saw that uh, uh, Mr. Boy Singila maybe in the room, but if they're not chair, uh, because they did say that uh, the investigations are ongoing, some of them may not be able to tune in. But I have received information that they had interaction with provincial Scopa in the Eastern Cape. And there is now a clear uh, uh, mechanism in terms of how the, our provincial office is going to work with the with the, with the provincial Scopa. Um, uh, Mr. Mr. Gosai, are you in the room? No, Mr. Gosai yes. is the. Oh yeah, he is. Yes. Okay. Uh, can you can you can you just appraise the committee in terms of your interaction in KZN with the KZN Scopa, please? Thank you, HAU. Honorable Chair, honorable members, uh, we've had in uh, interactions with Scopa already where we've done a presentation on investigations and we've also given them uh, effectively outcomes that they are assisting us in following up on. Uh, we've also formed in KZN a provincial fusion team 
which where we've got the DPCI, we've got the Premier's Office, we've got SARS and the AG South Africa all in one room. So that's where we are sharing information going forward. So there's been a number of interactions in that regard already. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Gosai. This, this was really just a demonstration, Chair, that there is that interaction. I've just received further information uh, recently that uh, uh, there's also similar interactions in other provinces. And we would like to make sure uh, that they continue to do that so that they can enable the provincial scopus uh, to, to, to really uh, exercise an appropriate uh, oversight based on the information that would give. Chair, the issue around the municipal level, uh, the investigation framework, I'm glad the Chair you've raised that. Uh, the question really comes at the right time when we are now at the stage where we are going to create uh, a forum that we that we have been spearheading together with COCTA. We have also engaged the uh, SALGA. Um, so we are at a stage now where we the terms of reference have been completed. We will be establishing uh, signing off that framework with all the the the, the parties and the uh, stakeholders uh, so that uh, that forum is established and the the investigations will be almost monitored and executed from there in that forum there will be so siu there will be npa there will be uh, hawks uh, there will be fic there will be uh, salga there will be cocta there will also be uh, uh, some municipal representatives so we would like to see and this is the one chair similar to what we have done in the health sector we have seen the health sector uh, framework working so effectively. So we would like to uh, uh, take that best practice to the, to the municipal area so that that space also receives appropriate uh, attention uh, uh, like we have done in the, in the health sector. Um, uh, Chair, you, you, you really uh, mentioned something that also is receiving attention, the issue around corruption in the distribution of of water tanks. Uh, we receive information from uh, whistleblowers. They even, uh, you know, in some instances uh, themselves, uh, uh, it looks like they also perform some oversight in these municipalities. They send even video clips of where this, these tanks are parked or in, in the middle of the road. You find that uh, the water is just spilling or they spill it deliberately go back and refill it. Chair, there's, there's really a need to look into that space and uh, we undertake that we will, we, will, we will do so. Thank you, Chair. I think I've covered the first part. Uh, no, that's fine. Um, uh, Honorable Hadebe and then Honorable Lees. Honorable Hatebe, I, I know that your connection and has been giving you issues. Let's go to Honorable Lis whilst you try and log him in. I see he's here, but he may be difficult. Honorable Lis, over to you. Oh, so I'll take Thank you. Thank you. All right, um, Honorable Lis, let's give Honorable Dex. Um, he hadn't spoken and you can come in after him. That's fine. Yes, okay, no, I don't want him to lose out on any of his napping there, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. All right, wonderful. Jacks, over to you. That wasn't Jay. Okay, I, I know. I was listening to advocate from TB, MOTB, and then uh, uh, I posted the, the the question on the on the chat group here on the on the on the platform. But I don't think there is uh, uh, backup staff that deals with questions that we are putting on the platform. Uh, uh, when uh, Advocate Motibi was uh, responding, he raised the issue about the issues of the of the gloves, the procurement of gloves that was 55,000 rand. Is that correct? What you are saying, 55,000, or did he mean 55? No, he said 58,000. Is that correct, or did he actually mean 58 million? Can you just uh, clarify that? Was he speaking about 58,000 rand, or was he uh, actually meaning 58 million? Thank you. All right, we'll provide that clarity. 
uh, Honorable uh, Liz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I hope people understand my sense of humor, but anyway. Um, no, no, Mr. Chairman, that's Joyelle, no stress. No stress. This is Joyelle, okay. Um, Mr. Chairman, through you to Advocate Mutti TV. Um, another uh, issue that I, I you know, even Scopa, we were due to go and make a site visit. Um, I just want to confirm that the this particular project is also in in your sites, and that's the the border fence um, on our northern border with Zimbabwe. Um, whether that project, because I see you've got, I think it's 40 million um, under one project or one case um, of 40 million under public works, um, which surprises me a little that it's only one and only 40 million. But is it that particular that particular project of the border fence? Please advocate. Um, thank you very much. Thanks, Mr. Chair. All right. Honourable Hadar. All right. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I can't see on the gadget where I must raise my hand. I don't know no, what's it today. Yeah, please make up. No problem. No, you may proceed. It's fine. Okay. No, thanks so much, uh, Chaperson. Most of my questions have been taken, uh, more especially the issue of time frame. But it's fine. Let's pass on to that one. Uh, the question is... In Limpopo, I can see there's only one matter that is being investigated. A regular award of contracts to eight service providers who are not on the panel of contractors for the municipality. I don't see anything that talks to the issue of 40 temporary teen shelters valued at 2.4 million to Zanini residents. These teen shelters were built at a cost of 64,000 each. And the beneficiaries have since complained about the capability of human habitation. So I don't see anything that speaks to that one. I'm also covered with the issue of um, uh, tender, uh, this, um, uh, what is this, uh, the, 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 the tankers, uh, because I think uh, the, the advocate has already responded on the issue that they're going to look onto those issues of tanks and water tankers. And the other thing, uh, ESCOM is now in a, uh, in a state of, uh, of collapse. But uh, I don't know, I, I don't remember, but I think I heard the advocate speaking about the issue of ESCOM. But I don't see anything speaks to the allegations of misconduct, misconduct, nepotism and abuse of power leveled against Mr. John Oberholzer. The CEO, the COO of uh, ESCOM. Thank you. All right. Um, I, however, <clears throat> whilst the issue of the COO is on our radar, uh, unless you can direct us to anything specific to today, insofar as COVID-19 is concerned, uh, I think yeah. But I think Advocate Mti would look at that. But the issue of the COO does remain on our radar, and I'm sure when ESCOM next appears, uh, they will um, respond to that. All right, Honorable Hadebe, are you winning on that side? Can you hear me now, Chair? Yes, you can. All right, welcome. No, thank you, thank you. Uh, unfortunately, I have not had a, a privilege to see the presentation. I could only hear the voices, Chair. But be that as it may, I've heard everything that was um, uh, said without seeing the presentation. My question, Chair, it's in relation to uh, the assistance uh, from uh, provincial treasury and national treasury. Uh, this is based on the circular or the instruction that was issued uh, by national treasury, instruction uh, number eight of 2019-2020, where he directed all... Uh, 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 departments and, and state-owned entities that when they procure these uh, uh, items and services under COVID-19, they ought to report uh, to National Treasury within 30 days of all the procurement uh, uh, so that the National Treasury can have the list of all the, the, the services that were procured under COVID-19. Second aspect, uh, the recent team of ministers that was uh, announced on the 5th of August. 
to what extent uh, are they assisting in the process? Because when I had that announcement, I saw it as a duplication of what was already proclaimed on, on, on the uh, 23rd of, of July. So in us uh, pushing for this process to be expedited, one would like to get a sense and an understanding if these other teams are assisting in the process so we get an understanding whether or not it's just a, a duplication that does not yield positive results. Because yes, Chair, we are frustrated, we're impatient. In fact, by now, we would have loved to see all the culprits in orange overalls. We would have loved to hear you telling us that some of these culprits have been read the Miranda warning that they have a right to remain silent, whatever they say or do can or will be used against them in the court of law. So we're really impatient. Having these uh, other teams, what we want to hear from uh, SIU is that they are contributing into you expediting the process. If not, then we'll have to, uh, when they appear before us, uh, get a sense of their terms of reference. Like I said, when th that uh, team of ministers was announced, to me, I saw a duplication of what was already proclaimed. Thank you, Chair. All right, um, colleagues, are we all fine with the uh, responses, uh, with questions? Going once, going twice. All right, Advocate Mutibi and your team, you may uh, come back with the final bite on uh, responses and then just want to make, uh, then I'll make some responses to some of the salient points that you have raised, which will affect us this side. Okay. Right, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, the the border fence uh, uh, that uh, Honourable Liz referred to, yes, it's indeed uh, 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 the one that's mentioned uh, to the tune of about, uh, I think you said about 40 million. Uh, that was one of the first matters that, uh, that as SIU we got involved in, albeit on a secondment basis in the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure. They approached uh, us to, to assist the department in investigating that matter. And we did that, and the turnaround time was quite quickly. Uh, Mr. Lafetto, you can correct me. I think we completed it in a matter of two to three weeks. And then we handed over the report uh, to, the, to the department. Um, so what we are doing at the moment is that, uh, and missed, we just didn't uh, include the details of the of the special investigating matters. That matter is also receiving attention of Dr. Wells uh, so that uh, we recover the monies that uh, uh, the department would have lost. It's on its way to the to the special tribunal. It will be enrolled, I'm informed, uh, 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 soonest. So, Mr. Lee, uh, Honorable Lees, uh, yes, indeed. Uh, uh, the border fence has received quite attention and we have made several findings. Uh, we found some irregularities in that space, um, and I'm glad that uh, uh, that uh, those those uh, actions have been executed to hold those responsible uh, to account at the department. Uh, Honourable, uh, when we're referring to the value of the of the amount, uh, I mean the value of the SCM process. At SIU, at that time, as I said, it was really the beginning uh, of this lockdown, and we wanted to have our employees having the masks. Uh, the value is indeed 58,000 rands. Uh, it's not 58 million. So that is the cost uh, that were attached to this contract. But uh, we really take this allegation serious because uh, first and foremost, as we uh, as I say to our to our colleagues internally, that of course, of course, we do have operational risks like any other organization, but we have to be exemplary. We really have to be exemplary. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter what the amount is. Uh, we do not expect to see uh, this kind of irregularities uh, in SIU, of course, at anywhere in the in, in the state institutions. Uh, the issue uh, of the Limpopo uh, uh, shelters, and Mr. Lecheto, you can come in. Uh, uh, I'm informed that the team in Limpopo has got this matter in as one of their uh, uh, matters that they're 
that they're investigating. Uh, they're still uh, uh, busy with the uh, information that, that's required to make sure that uh, it's appropriately attended to. And uh, we know that uh, uh, it's one of the matters that really needs to be prioritized. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Lekhetu, are you able to confirm that that matter is also receiving attention in Limpopo? Uh, actually, thanks. Uh, this, this matter is receiving attention together with other matters that we have received recently, where the team uh, is currently collating all the information regarding this thing. I'm sure during the next uh, reporting, we will be able to uh, indicate progress. Thank you. Yeah. No, thank you very much. Uh, honorable member, uh, this, this matter uh, is receiving uh, our urgent uh, attention and it's been prioritized with the others. Uh, in respect of ESCOM, um, uh, we've noted the, the comments and that is why I referred uh, when the question was asked whether there's a potential knock-on uh, onto other investigations, in particular ESCOM was mentioned, I did say that we have, uh, we have made sure that as we balance the resources, we do not impact materially on the other investigations. ESCOM is, is really one of the focus areas where we would like to make sure that those who are responsible for the wrongdoing there are really attended to. Uh, the issue around the COO, uh, yes, indeed, uh, uh, we've also uh, looked at that. We know that uh, ESCOM did say that they've looked at it, but I've said to the teams that we need to look at the report that ESCOM has and see if there's anything that SIU uh, needs to do, if, uh, if there's any gaps in that uh, uh, report that uh, um, ESCOM has submitted. Um, uh, Honorable uh, Hadebe, as we do the investigation, yes, we do it. We look at various instruction notes by the National Treasury and we look at whether they have been complied with, including that reporting requirement. Uh, so we will be able to be reporting uh, whether there's any state institution uh, that has complied or not complied uh, uh, with, with the reporting, particularly those that are under in our investigations. The recent team uh, constituted by ministers, uh, that team is convened by our minister, Minister Lamula, and uh, we've had an internal discussions in, in the JCPS. Um, once uh, the, the immediate focus, we are informed, and I'm sure the committee will listen to the, that committee when it appears, um, the, the, the focus is to, was to collate the contracts and make sure that they, they are they are included in a repository and then the intention as reported is to make them public. But with regards to the law enforcement agencies, we should be able to have access into those contracts so that uh, uh, we can do the comparison uh, and be able to, uh, to, to see uh, the completeness of the investigations that we are doing. Because that, that, that list is going to, to give us what, uh, what could be called the value at risk. The value at risk here is all the spend that has been uh, uh, conducted by state institutions in terms of all of those contracts. But of course, we may not have allegations against all of those contracts. Uh, our investigations are allegations based. Uh, so those that we've got allegations against, we will conduct investigation. But of course, um, uh, we will obviously interact with the ministers and see the extent to which, even, even without uh, uh, allegations, there is just that assurance that is conducted, uh, particularly by the Auditor General, when they do real-time auditing, and we are engaging with the Auditor General to ensure that even those that they've looked at uh, in the sampling that they've got, they're able to refer those matters to us so that we can we can investigate uh, based on the referrals. Honorable Chair, uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I think I've covered the questions that came up. Yeah, no, thank you very much. Edwin can TV, just a quick one. Um, how much is the projected cost of these investigations that you're doing? How much will all of this cost us? Um, and of course, whether the resources that you require are available. Um, I think that is important if we are 
to have confidence that um, the plans you've outlined and that um, framework you have outlined and the terms of reference you have presented are to gain traction, they hinge on resources. So if you can briefly just uh, give us a response to, to, to that. Yes. No, uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Chair. Uh, we've, we've applied our minds to, to, to the course. Normally what happens is the teams across the, the provinces, they do uh, uh, constitute the, the teams firstly, and then they do an assessment in terms of the, uh, the resources, whether it's chief uh, investigating officer or whether it's a forensic investigator, uh, the legals involved, and then they would then quantify the resources per investigation. Uh, and then they would do what's called the letters of engagement with the state institutions. That work is continuing parallel. Um, but we've also engaged with the, with the National Treasury, uh, DG in particular, uh, to say uh, uh, we are quantifying what is it that you know, this will cost and if there are any uh, additional funds that, uh, that SIU may require. Chair, um, uh, as of at, at the moment, we do not have that absolute uh, quantified amount. The, this Friday coming, uh, I expect that the teams would probably have finalized all the teams and assessment of the resources that are involved and be able to quantify the resources. We can then send uh, that uh, to the to the chairperson and the honorable committee. All right, no, that's fine. You'll we'll be very interested in the financial implications of these investigations. Yes. Uh, because the tragedy of South Africa is that uh, money is made available for development and emergencies, as we've seen. And then we have to spend money investigating how that money was spent and then spend money to recover money that was stolen. Yes. And so we do need to have a full appreciation of the magnitude yeah. Uh, impact of this on the fiscus, uh, because ordinarily we should not have to be dealing with investigations if people were honest. But of course, um, honesty is a tall order um, in procurement in South Africa currently. Mm -hmm. Look, at, let me um, thank you very much and your team on behalf of the colleagues. The Bait Bridge Border Post uh, Fence, um, we would like to receive that report. Uh, please, so that uh, colleagues can have a look at it and then uh, maybe present it to us as well so that we can speak to it because um, it's important. I'm, sure, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure how readily available that can be done, uh, but uh, I think uh, we would like that report if it's complete by the end of this week yeah. okay. um, so that colleagues can have sight of it and then we can discuss and deliberate um, on it as well. So colleagues, I'm sure Friday is a fair request. Yes, our, our oversight visit to Bait Bridge will go on uh, because we're still awaiting the National Treasury report as well and the AG report, which we are going to read uh, in conjunction with the SIU report, and then we'll get a full picture and arrive also with our own determinations. So I think that at the next opportunity of oversights, and also given that we are on level two now, um, it should make it easy for us. The, the second point, of course, goes to the issue of uh, the SIU reports going to the presidency. I think that once at the end of each six weeks, when the report is submitted, we're going to call in the presidency uh, to come and then speak to those reports to ensure that there's implementation uh, on issues. So in as much as the SIU will do what the advocate has said, that they will make a note that we require yeah. it, we will call in the presidency at every interval so that um, they, they speak to what we, we have to do in that regard. Insofar as your own investigation that you have also referred to the AG, uh, on the allegations against the SIU. When that report is done, the AG will come in to brief us uh, on, the, on his report so that we don't get it from you, but we That's get right. it from somebody that was actually yes. um, investigating. So I think we will do that. Okay. Okay. Um, so, um, colleagues, I think uh, 
we, we, are, we are fine. I would just like to request to an administration to consult legal as a matter of urgency for the drafting of a resolution, if you agree, that we can consider on Friday to give direction to the uh, former, rather the constitution of the anti-corruption task. In absolute disarray at this point in time, and that does not help us. And if we continue to engage with the law enforcement agencies in isolation and individu as individuals or as individual institutions uh, and not as a team, as we have had previously, that in itself does cause problems to effective and efficient oversight and consequence uh, management as well in successful prosecutions. So I think we need to be very firm on that one so that we can resolve on it on Friday when we have concluded with the ministers uh, when on the meeting of the IMC. But I think that uh, it will be to our advantage. And so if colleagues can make submissions um, and input uh, to, to that so that on Friday we resolve on it uh, and or rather receive a draft resolution on Friday and then next week we resolve on it. But it will be a dereliction of duty to allow the anti-corruption task team uh, to continue on this path of dysfunctionality that we have witnessed. Because ordinarily, they should, as a team, be working on all these matters. Because once allegations have been investigated, the NPA should ordinarily be prosecuting. But the lapses in the system in communication uh, are emboldening the actions of corruption that uh, we, 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 have, we have seen. So I hope that, uh, colleagues, you will find that uh, to be um, in order that let's resuscitate the anti-corruption task team for what it's worth. Uh, it, it, it must be something that uh, we, 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 we bring back uh, on, 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 onto the table. So I would like to really uh, thank you, uh, colleagues, and yep. say to the SIU, uh, we expect you we, 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 to move with the necessary speed and agency. Yes. yes. That cannot be overstressed. And yep. that today we have received your terms of reference and your framework of operation. Our next meeting is going to be about results. Yeah. We want to see concrete and tangible outcomes. Yes. We, 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 I think colleagues generally and specifically, we accept what has been said, and today we have satisfied ourselves that, um, you know, the issues as we had raised them ourselves are receiving attention, as has whistleblowers, and, and, and so on. But I, I fundamentally believe uh, that um, if we don't move with speed, then we are complicit in the corruption. We are aiding and abetting the corruption. Uh, we, we are emboldening the corruption. It is only when concrete action is taken. And so, Advocate Ntibi, that uh, those budgetary issues, if they can also be presented yes. uh, to us uh, by the end of this week, or as and when you receive them and have engaged National Treasury, okay. we would uh, appreciate that. So, I think from our side, we welcome the the terms of reference and the scope which you have presented. Uh, of course, appreciating that it's a moving target, appreciating yep. that it will continue to grow because the corruption uh, is being unearthed uh, every day. But what you have presented to us, to, we want in the report that you'll be submitting to get very clear mm. uh, progress on each of the transactions and transgressions uh, that you would have leveled. We, on our side, will do what we have to do. Uh, we certainly have got no tolerance for, for corruption, and we are equal to the task. We will be, of course, undertaking other work and referring more work to you as and when we yep. also um, receive these issues. Uh, well, colleagues, you. Friday, we will be meeting with the interministerial committee, which has been tasked to in, investigate they will brief us on the mandate. They will brief us on their own uh, terms of reference. But what the message uh, is a point of departure to them on Friday 
is that the parliamentary body upon which they will be reporting to is ourselves and therefore it's important that they get into the work understanding that we will be uh, keenly focused on the work they are doing and we have invited the law enforcement agencies across the spectrum to be present in that yes. meeting as well and i'm sure that um, they will be present uh, yes, because we expect them to be present and in fact let me put it this way attendance is not negotiable it's compulsory given the extent of the challenges which are before us so that meeting will be at 10 um, on friday and so I think it will bring full circle, Honorable Hadeb, the questions you have raised when we juxtapose their work and what the SIU um, is doing. So to Sistombe and Putben and our team, please can we look at the draft resolution with its speed so that the revival of the anti-corruption task team has before us of COVID-19 expenditure. Colleagues, um, I thank you very much. Um, good. Uh, the House will be meeting this afternoon at 3, so I wish you well. Um, you. In the absence of any other issue, colleagues, thank you very much, and uh, we will meet on Friday. The meeting stands. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Chair. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, SIU. Please arrest Thank people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Peggy, fix your speech before the That meeting is very important. Yes, yes. No, I think I'm sabotaged here. I'll, I'll try and fix my devices and gadgets. Lung is sum sum. Um, sample you. Kono um sum a wulung silepe. Usabela matlozi. Nasha lusta.